Welcome all. My name is Matt Commentor, working with Lauren Patrick. He's right there. You'll see him later in the presentation. Today, we're going to analyze the history of the dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. To start our presentation, we identified two knowledge claims. The first of these knowledge claims is we do know the Americans dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima on August 6, 1945. We have a video to show physical proof of our knowledge claim, which is going to show the actual bombing of Hiroshima. And we concentrated the damage on the industrial section. At 10 in the morning of August 9th, As you can see, the bomb was exploded above they dropped the city a nuclear the weapon on Hiroshima. Now, this is a good this way of identifying that it actually happened. It was the funeral we have more video from the way. The bomb had been purposely exploded high. So that As the you can see, this was the Americans' the way the of ending the war, so to speak. Mm. So they, they, they went to their top method and, yeah, they dropped a bomb. We have a second video. Once again, it's going to show the bomb. Clearly, the this high. once again, as you can see, once again, as you can see, an atomic bomb is a very powerful weapon. And yeah, it definitely, I would say, decimated the Japanese. Lauren now is going to provide us with our second knowledge claim which is going to be as he tells you. The second knowledge claim we have is, we know that the bombing on Hiroshima left the city in ruin. We have a, we have a video supporting this knowledge claim. And it shows how the entire city was pretty much leveled. There's only a few buildings here and there that um, actually stood after the bombing, and there was over 2,000 people that were killed in the bombing. 200,000. Once again, as you can see, there was much destruction done. It completely leveled the city. It left pretty much no life where it hit, and as you can see, once again, that was the Americans' technique of ending the war. Maybe, like I said, you could see it as brutal, you could see it as justifiable. It's up to perception. They also detonated it a little high over the city, so then the radiation would have a major toll over the people. Um, we have our three truth checks. The correspondence check, we have primary sources. We have the video, there uh, are interview statistics that show the deaths. Uh, it's some experiences that happened for people that were actually there during while the bomb went off. Um, we can also coherently check with our knowledge to other people's because we have history textbooks that talk about the bombing. Uh, the internet, obviously, we can go around and check lots of things to see that our knowledge is consistent with other people's. Um, and we cannot pragmatically check it. It is uh, not relevant to what we could do because you can't pragmatically check history. We're not going to bomb, rebomb Hiroshima. Also, Lauren's going to explain the ways of knowing in terms of this event. Um, our sense perception is obviously different between different people. We have perceived it in different ways. The Japanese saw it as they had bombed Pearl Harbor. We bombed them against a civilian, uh, a civilian area. It is, so there are different perceptions there. Uh, also, our spoken language helps communicate this because we can uh, just go around and we can ask people what they think of it. Um, and it also helps with the coherence check. Okay, now I'm going to, um, we have to link this with a knowledge question, obviously. I'm going to go into our knowledge question. What we marked with Hiroshima was how does perspective affect the interpretation of the bombing of Hiroshima? This is obviously going to be a different perspective because it's between two sides. You have the Americans and the Japanese. Obviously, the Americans are not going to view it the exact same way as the people who got bombed, which were the Japanese in this case. You go to the 
next slide. So what we have, obviously, the American view on the bombing, they looked at it as necessary to end the war. They saw it as the Japanese were just using kamikaze attacks and honestly killing themselves. They needed to end the war now because it was just becoming a one-sided war and they didn't want, it was of their best interest to end this war, so they used a nuclear bomb and uh, a few days later actually the Japanese did surrender to them. Now, then you have the Japanese view on the bombing. They look at it as if there's no justifiable reason why you could drop a bomb and kill 200,000 uh, civilians. Now obviously we, they would look at it as a whole war, honestly, as unjustifiable. We did firebomb um, Japan and completely decimate it, frankly. So maybe whenever you look at it like that, once again the Japanese are going to look at it in a completely different way than the Americans would. Now, we do need to link this with another event in history, so to speak. What we can link with is how does national perspective affect world views on tragic events. We picked two events. We picked the war in the Middle East, and then we picked 9-11. Start off with the war in the Middle East. Obviously, um, in the countries there in the Middle East, they're going to look at this war um, completely different than, we, than uh, Americans do. We came into this war, we could look at it as we're getting it for oil, we're doing it to stop them, whereas they look at it as this war has been going on for hundreds of, I mean, thousands of years they've been fighting amongst this, and it looks like we're coming in to stop them and it's completely unnecessary and that's obviously why they're going to fight against us. They think we're just there for the oil. Now, honestly, we could just be there for the oil, but we are there to, we're trying to help them whereas they don't think we need help. Secondly, we have 9-11, a very <coughs> sensitive uh, topic and event in United States history. Um, on September um, 11th, 2001, the um, terrorists, uh, which more than likely were from the Middle East as we can see, um, came in and they took down the World Trade Centers in New York. Now, they looked at it as necessary, they wanted to, they, they were mad at us obviously for coming in, taking their land and stuff, and they wanted to make an event to get us to come to war with them, so they destroyed the towers. Now, once again, perception is going to stay different, they think it is necessary, and we thought it was just an act of terrorism. Once again, we can look at that in the exact same way we looked at Hiroshima, because they could have looked at it as an act of terrorism, so to speak, we destroyed 200,000 people whereas they destroyed the tower and killed thousands of people. So in the same instance, you can look at it like that, and we felt like we were attacked like the Japanese did on Hiroshima, whereas the Americans in Hiroshima's case thought it was necessary to either a provoke, well, we didn't provoke, we were to end the war, and then maybe um, <clears throat> the terrorists that attacked us seemed they wanted to provoke us, and that was necessary to them. So here we go, we have our bibliography doing the two sources we use. We obviously use the video. And then we did um, go with an interview of a Japanese man who was through the event of Hiroshima. He did um, tell us about, um, he didn't tell us, but we read, um, obviously, just what his opinion was on the event and such. So that we were able to better interpret the event and how the perspective would be different. So that's the end of our presentation, obviously. Hope you liked it. Um, that was the interpretation of and change of perspective and the oral history on Hiroshima and the bombing of it. Thank you. This is Matt Commodore and Lauren Patrick.